And the next man up is, uh, well, he's something. Uh, Greg Moody, everybody. <laughs> Second funniest man in his family over there. <laughs> Hello. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, well, you know, I own my own business, and hiring people is hard enough. But hiring people that just entered the workforce, 18 to 25 year olds, that's the hardest. It's not because they're dumb. Well, they are dumb. But, you know, I have this crazy idea that when they, people come to work, they should kind of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew it was crazy, but you know, I, or at least show up on time, or maybe show up at all. And I'd really like it if they didn't check their Facebook 15 times an hour. And I, oh, somebody's trying to watch the show. Okay, but you know, I know that I sound like an old man should be in a wheelchair in a retirement home screaming, Kids nowadays! But I swear, kids nowadays are different. One guy showed up 30 minutes left, uh, late for work, and I said, well, you know, it'd be really great if I'd appreciate it if you could show up on time next time, and, and you were supposed to be here a half hour ago. I swear, they started crying and saying, why are you being so mean to me? And that guy was 45 and had just retired from the Marine Corps. <laughs> I'd like to fire all the 20-somethings, but unless you want to get your employees from the Walmart pool of greeters, you're kind of out of luck. <laughs> but I think it's the parents' fault. You know, when they're young, there's a term helicopter parent, where they hover over them. The new term for people in their 20s is cockpit parent. They ride next to them, side by side, and do everything for them. <laughs> yeah, like pay their rent, or buy their cars, or pay for their phone, or do their laundry, bring them dinner find people for them to date. <laughs> it's no wonder that only two out of five people in their 20s are financially independent. In India, by the time they're 20, they know calculus, physics, speak four languages, and have a postgraduate degree. <laughs> I'm guessing they also show up to work on time. <laughs> yeah, but the thing that really terrifies me is that my son turns out like that. I don't care that much about him, but if he doesn't get a good job, he'll never leave the house. <laughs> he turned 13, and I decided that I've got to teach him a work ethic. So I make him do stuff, like take out the trash, or vacuum the house, clean the toilet after his grandpa died on it. <laughs> oh, well, not died on it, but died on it. <laughs> Still, he complains and complains. Dad, I'm not your slave. Dad, the other kids' parents don't make me do work like this. Well, maybe the other kids' parents don't love them. <laughs> or maybe the other kids' parents want to be paying off their debt, bailing them out of rehab, and taking care of six grandkids when they turn 65, but I don't. Yeah, somebody thought for that, thank you very much. Unless you want your kids to do that. Yeah, he, the strategy did work though. He uh, worked 10 hours the other day. He was working and working on the phone and doing research. It was also he could figure out what to say when he called CPS to complain about me. <laughs> That's why kids shouldn't be allowed to have a phone. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, now I'm the one taking out the trash, vacuuming the house, and cleaning out the toilet after he dies on it. <laughs> so it's the government's fault. I'm blaming the government. CPS, the government. They're the ones who keep me from fixing the problem in my own home. Maybe they'd like to help. I don't know who could count on. Maybe the governor. He's not saying it out loud, but Doug Ducey would love to cancel all education after third grade. <laughs> <laughs> save money and then the kids would have to work. Which I think is a great idea, but then there'd be no jobs left for U of A graduates. Go to UCLA. 
and ASU. Anyway, so. Oh, not me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> UCLA and ASU, that's who we got to vote for. Anyway, so, um, so uh, yeah, it, it, who else could help us in the government? Let's see. How about Arizona Superintendent of the Schools, Diane Douglas? <laughs> hey, there's a winner. We elected, the good people of Arizona elected someone with zero experience in education to run the schools. Yeah, the first thing she did was fire all the good people who she didn't have authority to fire and sue the State Board of Education. There's gangbangers with tattoos on their eyelids that could do a better job than her. <laughs> That's what we get for blindly voting Republican. <laughs> you could run Albert Einstein, Albert Schweitzer, and Mother Teresa together as Democrats, and Arizonans would still vote Republican. <laughs> But it's okay, I'm pretty confident we're not gonna be last place in the United States in education anymore. We'll be last place in the world. <laughs> yeah, you know, at this point in a comedy show, I'm supposed to explain or tell you a funny solution to this problem. As a wise man once said, nope, we're screwed. 